Mm. Oh. Hey. I didn't see you there. Sorry. I'm just enjoying the steak. Uh, let me guess. You're here for the video? On me? Okay. I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll get started. people what they do is they go to the store and they just go to the aisle with the meat they look at all the beautiful meat nicely packaged and shiny and ready to go they just grab one check out go home and they're good to go but where does that come from how does it get there how does it get in that packaging there's so many steps that you don't even see before your meat arrives in the grocery store that I want you guys to know about so there's basically about eight steps involved in getting meat to you so that you can actually buy it and eat it. The first step is obviously you have to raise the animal, right? Which requires feed and water and land and energy and maintenance. You gotta grow them up so the meat has to grow. What happens next, the part everyone doesn't like, you have to kill the animal, right? So you have to slaughter the animal. What happens after you slaughter it? You have to butcher the animal, which means to cut it into pieces. After the butchering is done, what they do is they grade the meat. They give it a different grade, right? So sometimes you'll see like grade A beef, that's what grading is. So they determine the quality of the meat, and that quality is determined by several things, but we don't need to go into that. After the meat has been graded, it's cut. What that means is it's cut into the different kinds of cuts that you find at the grocery store, right? You've got like flank steak versus top sirloin versus ribeye versus the, the ribs or filet mignon. You've got all these different cuts. Then they package it. Once it's packaged, then they distribute it, and they ship it and transport it to where it's going to be eventually, purchased as the final step, which is where you see the meat. But you don't see any of those first seven steps. All you see is the shiny, nice package of meat right there, lit up in the grocery store, ready for you to buy and cook and eat. I wanna show you a couple maps right now to show you where most of the meat is raised in this country. So this is a map of where the beef is raised, and you can kind of see most of the beef is concentrated in the Midwest. So here's a map of pork. And as you can see, pork, again, sort of Midwest, a little bit, maybe a little bit more north than beef, but that's where you see most of the pork. And here is poultry. They call it broilers. I didn't know that actually until I did this. So broilers is another term for poultry. You can see a lot of this is in the South, the Southeast, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Dairy is interesting. You get a lot of dairy in California and the Midwest. It's a good combination. So there's some a different place where dairy is raised. So dairy, we're talking about milk mainly. So we kind of have a very basic idea of where our meat comes from. But I want to talk about how much meat do we eat? And we eat a lot, okay? The United States eats a ton of meat. And when I say a ton, I mean billions of pounds of meat every year. We're eating so much meat that the only country in the world that eats more meat than us per person is Australia. So get on, you mites. Let's just talk about the average person living their life in the United States over 10 years. How much meat are they gonna eat? The average person is gonna consume 0.7 cows, 2.1 pigs, and 288 chickens, right? That's on average. If you add all that up over 10 years, that turns out to be about 2,700 pounds of meat. That's a lot of meat. All that meat that we're eating takes a lot of uh, resources to produce. Right, 222 pounds per person is estimated in the United States this year. So that's a lot of resources that are required to raise those organisms. So if you look at the numbers, just to give you a general, just a quick general sense of how much water and grain uh, are required to raise these animals. If you think about beef, let's just start with beef. Uh, beef requires about 1,800 pounds of water per pound to raise and about 6.6 .6 pounds of grain for one pound of beef. To raise one pound of pork, you need 576 pounds of water and 4.2 pounds of grain. And to raise one pound of chicken, you need 468 pounds of water and also 4.2 pounds of grain. So you can kind of compare that. Obviously beef needs the most per pound, so it's the most intensive in terms of resource utilization. And then you have pork and chicken, a little bit less. I wanna outline some of the, the, the environmental and the ethical concerns that 
are legitimate concerns that people have raised and that exist for uh, eating meat. So there's sort of four main issues that you can kind of uh, think about environmentally uh, that pop up when you, when you deal with meat consumption at the level to which the United States is doing it. Number one is just the land utilization, right? In order to grow and raise and uh, have these organisms go through their life cycle so that we can get the meat from them, they require land, right? So we literally have to, sh to cordon off large sections of land to raise these animals. Another big issue with land utilization is not just the sheer use of it, but also the overgrazing. Overgrazing is a real issue because what it does is it causes soil erosion, uh, loss of nutrients in the soil, and overall leads to something other than a natural landscape. Whenever you have a non-natural landscape, you have very low biodiversity, and that's just a real issue environmentally. Because more biodiversity means stronger food webs. Stronger food webs eventually help humans because we rely on food webs for a lot of things like food and resources and other things like that. Two is these animals, they have waste products, they poop, they pee. There's a lot of waste coming out of these, or these organisms that we have to deal with and manage. So the waste management aspect is a real tricky problem. Why is animal poop and pee uh, and other waste products from animals not so good? The waste of these animals contain actually a lot of nutrients that can get into the water, which is not necessarily a good thing. You might think, well, nutrients, that's good, nutrients are good, but it turns out if you have too much nutrients being introduced into a, a water system, what you can get are big burst or growth of organisms who feed on those nutrients. And then in the process of that, they can use up a lot of the oxygen in the water, which then kills off other organisms that need that oxygen. Another issue is that a lot of this, the waste products coming from these organisms, these cows, these pigs, these chickens have disease causing microbes in them and that can lead to infection and pathogens in in the water supply another environmental issue that pops up is the just the sheer energy and material required right so we talked about the amount of water and grain required so it, you use a lot of water in the process of getting meat not just to raise the meat, right? But also to, we need water in the process of, of slaughtering the animal and butchering them and cutting them and distributing them and packaging them. Every step along the way requires water and requires energy as well. And where does energy come from? Most of the time it comes from burning of fossil fuels, which if you trace that back has issues with climate change, global warming and those kinds of things. And then finally, another big environmental issue is the greenhouse gas issue. So it turns out, and especially cattle, release a lot of a greenhouse gas called methane. Methane is produced anytime you have living organisms in an environment where there's not a lot of oxygen, they produce methane instead of carbon dioxide. And so in the guts of these cows, these ruminants, these cattle, you have microorganisms digesting the grass and the feed, whatever it is that the cows are eating, digesting that inside the cow's gut where there is no oxygen. And so what the cows do is then they belch and fart out methane. Research has shown that about 10, anywhere from 10 to 12 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions are coming from livestock, especially cattle in the form of methane. So with the environmental issues, but on the other hand, you've got some big issues with the ethics or the morality of the whole idea of consuming meat. A lot of people don't eat meat because of the environmental issues, but there's also a huge group of people who do not eat meat because of the ethical and the moral implications of meat consumption. Basically, there's two major pieces to the ethical argument against eating meat. The first is the living conditions of the animals themselves, living in things like factory farms, where they are crowded into very confined spaces in order to save space. I don't think anyone would argue that that's an enjoyable or a good thing to have animals crowded into these spaces so much so that they are feeling and experiencing suffering. The other issue is just the idea of the killing of the animal itself. Like how do we value a non-human life? And so a lot of people who are very much anti-meat uh, consumption are people who place the value of all life at an equal level and they don't put human life above that. That is sort of an individual thing that you can sort of decide. I know for myself, I don't know if I agree that all life is equal. It's hard for me to make that judgment. As a human, we're very subjective. We have our own viewpoint, right? We don't know what it's like to be any other organisms 
Or in fact, we don't know if there is such a thing to be like another organism. Like, does an ant know what it is like to be an ant? Humans have kind of arranged a hierarchy of organisms. You know, unofficially, bacteria, we don't even really consider too much, even though they are life, they're kind of down here. Most people don't have a problem, like, swatting a mosquito on their arm. They don't think twice about it. Other things like rats and mice, these kinds of rodents, pretty low. But then we've got other organisms, like what we would call like the charismatic megafauna. These are the bigger animals, like bears or wolves or lions. And these are the things that people really get attached to, or elephants, right? We seem to value them even more. For the most part, we value human life pretty high. It seems like that's kind of something we've done, just sort of unofficially. Humans have sort of created this hierarchy that we all kind of agree on, but not everyone does. And so there is a moral issue there with the value of, of, of life in general. So those are the environmental and those are the ethical issues that exist when we think about meat consumption. And I want you to keep those in mind because what I'm going to offer in a moment is a solution to both the environmental and the ethical issues in the form of lab-grown meat that I think will get a lot of people who don't eat meat because of those reasons, maybe get them a chance to be able to eat meat. Yeah.